Daniel Ricciardo has entered the 2024 season in an unwanted way, performance-wise, and it seems like there's a huge threat that he'll lose the seat sooner rather than later, amid the ongoing internal power shift in Red Bull. Obviously, Helmut Marco's statements were strong enough of an indicator that something in Ricciardo's driving has to improve. But now, even Liam Lawson, the closest driver to replace the Aussie, has had a say on this matter, and it's not something that Ricardo would want to hear. But after the first two races and Sonoda's strong qualifying form, have we seen the last of Ricardo? Look, it's safe to say that one of the hottest topics in Formula 1 will always be the racing bull seat, mostly because these drivers have the opportunity to be the next Red Bull driver. This was the primary reason as to why Ricardo made a return to the sport with Alpha Tauri, and even when the team rebranded to Racing Bulls, the Aussie made his demands even stronger, join Red Bull from 2025 onwards and potentially retire there. However, his priorities have shifted after the first two races, and if there is one thing that we do know about Red Bull, it's that the environment does not tolerate underperformance, regardless of your past history with the team. Now, the sole reason why Ricardo was brought in to replace De Vries was because of the poor performance that the Dutchman had in the first 10 races in 2023, and now he might be facing the same fate as well. Liam Lawson has opened up on this matter and recognised that there is a huge potential for him to step up and show Ricardo how it's done. And when talking about it in a further extent, the Kiwi went on to say, I think Daniel knows that the potential is there but I'm sure he's expected to step it up. Obviously, this year is the first in a while where everything is exactly the same and it makes it very tough to get a seat when there are multiple guys. I feel like I'm ready, but there are a lot of other guys there, and ultimately, my goal is to get back in that seat as soon as possible. Furthermore, Lawson was asked whether he could do a better job than Ricardo at the moment, a question that he answered with a wide smile on his face, but then went on to warn Red Bull that if they don't utilise his talent, another team on the grid could. Addressing this matter, Lawson continued, Absolutely I can. Red Bull is pretty cutthroat. I would love to drive for them, but ultimately, I want to be an F1 regardless. Now, if we're to look at Lawson's performance in the five-race streak he's had in 2023, you could easily understand why there is such a big hype built around him. At one time, he was the highest finishing Alpha Tauri driver at the Singapore GP, grabbing two points and effectively outscoring Sargent, for example, who ended a full 22-race season with just one point with Williams. More importantly, Lawson has proven that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sonoda, who's had quite an experience with the team. And while we're yet to see their performance throughout the length of a full season, it's very likely that we might not have to wait that long for the scenario to happen. Obviously, a very important factor that we need to consider here is the marketing value of Daniel Ricciardo. The Aussie brings a lot of attention and sponsors to a team that would be heavily underfunded had it not been for his appearance. However, that does not top off the fact that he also needs to perform strong and provide solid feedback from the engineers back in Fienza. And while we did receive that vibe after last year's Mexico GP, it seems like this year's car is not really suited to Ricardo's driving style something he's opened up about. And this is all too similar to what happened in McLaren in 2022 and 2023, when Ricardo was absolutely outperformed by Norris and his self-confidence was brought to the level of him just showing up to GPs and hoping they would end as soon as possible. Although Horner believes that version of Ricardo is long gone, there are way too many similarities to ignore now. And according to Helmut Marko, who is practically the scout for talent and is responsible for their career development path in Red Bull, Ricardo needs to step it up. Otherwise, he would be replaced in a blink of an eye. When writing a column about the current situation with the Racing Bulls, a team that started the season on the wrong foot, Marco went on to say, A word about the Racing Bulls. There is a lot at stake this season for both Yuki and Daniel. Yuki's qualifying performance was very good, and Ricardo has to come up with something soon. Where there is work, at least Sonoda is very good in qualifying. Then they're at the top of the World Championship points in the first stint, only to fall further and further behind afterwards. Well, the situation cannot be clearer. It's either Yuki or Daniel who get a shot at the second Red Bull seat, 
apart from the obvious candidate in Perez. And considering the fact that the Mexican driver started the season quite strong and made sure that he would be doing exactly what is being asked of him, which is to keep the second place in the driver's championship under his command, it's very unlikely that Red Bull would be considering a replacement for the Mexican driver. And on top of that, they also have to worry about Yuki Tsunoda's relationship with Honda, as there is a real possibility that the Japanese driver could be out of Red Bull once Honda and Aston Martin start their working relationship from 2026 onwards. This is the belief of many experts on the grid, but they do also believe that the sole reason Yuki is on the grid is because of Honda's presence in the sport, because the Japanese manufacturer does have a tendency to look for their academy drivers and promote them as much as they can in the Formula 1 sport. Be that as it may, Yuki is clearly the better choice right now for the racing bulls, but it's still not convincing enough to say that his seat is safe now, that Lawson has sent a clear warning that there could be circumstances in which he could drive for an F1 team and it wouldn't be Red Bull affiliated. Obviously, Williams is always an option, and judging by their close relationship with Mercedes, it will ultimately make Lawson a realistic option to drive for the Silver Arrows in the foreseeable future and provide heavy headaches to Red Bull week in and week out, a scenario they would much rather avoid now that they've groomed Lawson to be a very good and solid driver in F1. Which is why we need to see deeper into Ricardo's future in the sport, and more importantly, address the question of whether he still has it in himself to drive in a competitive manner. This is something that's been discussed by the 1980 world champion Alan Jones, who while feeling empathy for Ricardo, says that nothing would make him happier than seeing his compatriot do better, however he just feels like it's not written in the stars, and he needs to accept the fact that the time has gone by. Adding to this matter even further, Jones said, I think even Ricardo would agree that he has to improve. Bad luck or otherwise, I'm sure Daniel would like to have had better results than what he has had in 2024. At the end of the day, we can't blame the car all the time, which has been a bit of a tendency in the past. I would love to see Daniel go extremely well in Melbourne. I would like to see Daniel go extremely well, period. But he's treading water. He really needs to have some very good results and put up a good show. He can't be dwelling down where he is. I hate to say it, but I think we've seen the best days from Ricardo. He's had his bum in a few decent cars, irrespective of what people say. Although Ricardo's response was flat out denying, saying, hey, not really. When it comes to Alan Jones's comments in terms of him not being at his best and probably not a good fit for the sport, the situation is loud and clear. And if we don't see results sooner rather than later, it's evident that the situation situation will change drastically in terms of Ricardo seeing his F1 career end prematurely and not the way he would want it to. With Lawson's statement in mind, what do you think about Ricardo's future in the sport? And more importantly, do you think that Red Bull is going to pull the trigger on the Aussies' future and focus on their youth? Let us know in the comments down below.